live from Bellevue, Washington. It's the Cube covering SmartSheet Engage 18. Brought to you by SmartSheet. Welcome back to theCUBE. We are live at SmartSheet Engage 2018. I'm Lisa Martin with Jeff Frick. We are in Bellevue, Washington, and pleased to welcome one of the many customers of SmartSheet to the program. We have this, the office of the CIO, Jeff Cowley from PayPal. Welcome, Jeff. I've got a sandwich of Jeff's here. <laughs> a Jeff sandwich. I'll be here. So Jeff, tell us a little bit. Everybody knows PayPal. Uh, I was doing some, some studying over the weekend. 244 million active users. I'm sure that grows by the minute. 200 markets globally served, and you're doing transactions in over 100 currencies. Everybody has been using this for a while now. It's a household term. Even my mom knows PayPal, <laughs> and she can use it. So tell us about the office of the CIO at PayPal and your role. Sure, so my role specifically, I'm a program manager within that office, and my primary responsibility is to make sure that our environment is secure, that it's safe, that it's stable. Um, that way is the other parts of the company product can focus on being more strategic. But that really involves things like hardening our infrastructure, hardening the network, making sure that we can identify all of our assets accurately. Um, so a number of things there just to keep the environment, like I said, stable and secure. And the office of the CIO, I imagine, responsible for communicating regularly with the executive management team, needing to, to provide visibility, Exactly, I mean our leadership, Brad Strzok is the CIO. Um, we work you know, hand in hand with the other leaders of the company, I think. Uh, but in addition to some of the things I just called out, I mean the, you know, the, the CIO, that office is actually responsible for a lot of the enterprise um, applications. So it's basically the software that drives the company. So a lot, you know, that's customer, that's our employee facing applications. Yep. So you're obviously a Smartsheet user, which is why you're here, and we're grateful yep. for that. Tell us about the pre-Smartsheet era. How are you managing programs and projects? <laughs> I think uh, I've heard this story quite a bit here. So between uh, spreadsheets, Microsoft Project, you know, Trello, a number of other tools, and uh, you know, we're still in a distributed model. Um, but the good thing is that you know, within the within the CIO, we're able at this point on this in this particular area, right, to come in with a single tool to serve as a single system of record, you know, to really facilitate, um, you know, bringing the entire portfolio together. So yeah, I'd say you know, before very distributed. Now um, it's really uh, consolidated into uh, SmartSheet being our single system, uh, which has really worked well. So they showed a video uh, of your case study uh, during the keynote, mm -hmm. and you had a real specific use case, it sounds like, for your initial smart sheet deployment, which yep. sounds like a, a, something that many of us struggle with each and every week, which is the roll up the data to report upstairs. So I yep. wonder if you can give a little bit of color on you know, what, what, what did you have to roll up, what was the scale of that effort, and uh, why you decided this just isn't really working very sure, well Sure, absolutely. So we set off, <clears throat> Around three years ago, we had a three year program ahead of us, and I'd say at the end of year one, we realized just to, due to the magnitude, the number of people involved, the data involved in the overall portfolio, um, we needed a tool to come in and really help us be able to effectively and quickly you know, roll up that information so that we could present and take that information to our C-suite each week. Um, you know, just for effective decision making, making sure that they're in tune, they have line of sight to what's critical, what's not, and we're working on the right things, doing the right things. So, um, we considered a number of tools, again, Microsoft Project, whatnot. Um, we ended, landed with, uh, with Smartsheet, and it was really just word of mouth within the company. Um, so we took a look at a handful of tools and really uh, just tried to figure out what fit the bill for what we needed. And uh, you know, with a couple of uh, smart sheet videos on YouTube, we kind of quickly came to the decision, hey, this is, this is certainly a flexible tool. It's easy to ramp. Uh, you know, if you know spreadsheets, you pretty much know this. If you're a project manager, you know how to build a plan. Quite easy. So the ramp time was very minimal. Um, so made the decision, watched a bunch of YouTube videos, probably spent a month doing that, myself and the team. Uh, with the tool being intuitive in those videos, built a solution basically from the ground up, so. So this is without even having an, an engagement, this is PayPal, without even having an engagement with an account executive, you were able to find this, like you said, word of mouth, implement yeah. this on your own, and really 
you know, enable quite a bit of transformation Absolutely. within the executive team and what they need to see. Absolutely, I think um, you know, we look back at the end of year one when we made that decision, we realized, hey, we've got some high price consultants in, um, and we're probably using half of their time at that point just in collating that data. Um, so you know, you're talking about some you know, heavy dollars that are being spent there just in administrative type work. If we can cut that layer out and go straight to the source, we're saving ourselves a ton. We can you know, redirect those funds to other areas where we actually get some work done. So Jeff, how big was the initial deploy in, in terms of the team size? Because you said, <laughs> you, didn't, you didn't engage Smartsheet directly, you're watching some YouTube videos, and sure. yet you did see enough there that you wanted to go jump in. Did you jump all in from the beginning? Did you do kind of a POC? How did you, how did you get started? What was kind of the scope? Yeah, I kind of took a couple of, uh, couple of demos, straw man that we just put together on the fly, shared with some of our key stakeholders, say, you know, does this look right? Does it feel right? You get seeing the information that you think we need. And, um, you know, just the, the, the fact that we were able to come up with that so quickly, um, you know, just sold itself. And so, yeah, we vetted it, socialized it a little bit, but it was a pretty easy sell from that point. It was just building it out. And I'd say, you know, right from the get-go, we had already had about 14 programs as part of this portfolio in place at that point in time. So each program having between, uh, I'd say between five, 15 projects within that. So, uh, you know, the number of players was quite large. Probably had about 150 direct players in the program. You know, probably a couple of hundred more indirect that want line of sight to what we're doing. So line of sight, accountability, how was that embraced by those teams? And we talk a lot about digital transformation, Jeff, at every event, and how cultural transformation is mm. a necessity for that. How have you been able to leverage this tool to, to kind of evolve that, that culture within the office of the CIO? Yeah, that's a great question. I think. Um, you know, with us being able to cut out that middleman, when I say middleman, I'm talking PowerPoint slides. If we can get away from that, because a number of things happen there, but predominantly, I mean, you can fat finger a, you know, a, a PowerPoint slide and all of a sudden, you know, 100 turns to 200 or 1,000, something like that. So, I said, hey, if we can just go straight to our system of record, I mean, each project within this portfolio should have a project plan, they should have a risk and issues tracker, so we really decided, here's the baseline for what we need to have in terms of our data model. If we can have that, then we can, we can produce the dashboards that just read directly from those systems of record um, from an accountability perspective, right? That means, you know, there's no tweak in a PowerPoint slide, right? I mean, you're reading directly from the project plan, so it is what it is, but you know, it's reality, and that's what we need to deal with, and we ultimately step in front of the C-suite, right? You need to have, here's where we are, and it needs to be an accurate and timely reflection. I mean, that's another thing, is that timeliness. I mean, this is real-time data that we're talking, so, you know, something changes 10 minutes before, it's there on the dashboard, we're ready to talk to it. Yeah, I don't think there's enough talk about the, the, the timeliness, because it is connected directly to the database. It's not something that somebody's reporting on, and so yep. often, right, you get these multiple layers of people extracting data, you know, transcribing it, yep. putting it into whatever reporting tool they want, and just it just gets further and further from the truth with each passing minute and each passing iteration. Absolutely, absolutely. And we've talked about speed so much here, and uh, you know, so that's obviously a critical factor in decision making, especially. Right. So we want to make sure we have the latest and greatest there. So I'm just curious, your experience from a project manager point of view. You're a professional project manager. I'm sure you know all the the big heavy lifting tools. <laughs> when you see something like this, which is more of a no code you know, kind of low code, kind of cross-platform integration. Sure. You know, what type, of, what type of, of, of skills does that open up within the teams, within the, the data sources, within the ability to do something a lot less, uh, I want to say more nimble, you know, less heavy than kind of a traditional project management tool? Sure. I think nimble's a great word to describe it there because it really, it really is a tool that just is, is that, you, that you can build from, you know, it's a, more of a, like a grassroots effort as opposed to a enterprise kind of top down. I'm sure it works well in that, in that use case as well, but you know, for us it was something that was able to kind of fill needs that were distributed across the portfolio. Once you start building it up, filling those gaps, and you realize, hey, we've got a kind of an end-to-end -to -end tool here that really works well. 
And uh, I'm just curious, interest as other people have engaged with your output uh, in the organization, in terms of, hey, Jeff, can uh, can you give us, <laughs> can you share the PowerPoint links with us? Sure. Or not the PowerPoint links, excuse yeah. me, the YouTube links. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I joke because it feels like at this point I'm doing uh, you know, about one demo a week uh, to somebody else in the company, you know, which is a great thing. I mean, we leveraging best practices and uh, sharing that information. So there's certainly a growing user base within PayPal of Smartsheet. So you know, I try to keep up with the other teams that are using it, so that we are, you know, taking our best practices from one another that we're sharing. So uh, and then I think, um, you know, Engage is really helping me connect to those other PayPal users. Believe it or not, it's like yeah, probably met more here than I have back home. So this is great. <laughs> one of the things that um, was funny that popped up during the keynote this morning, Jeff, is a couple of customer quotes. These were anonymous, but this what you were saying, kind of, Jeff. It sounds like, and you probably wouldn't say this about yourself, so I'll say it for you, is that this this one woman who was a user of Smartsheet in her organization said that Smartsheet made her queen of the world. <laughs> sounds like there's yeah. some status elevation, but but I'm curious. <clears throat> so you started. You found this organically yourself, mm. this technology. Um, as Jeff was saying, you know, this is this is built for business users. You didn't have to have, even though you're in the office of the CIO, you didn't have to have IT's involvement here. But here you are, one of the evangelists now for Smartsheet at their event. Tell us about that that um, engagement, pun intended, that you got <laughs> with Smartsheet to be able to start maybe, um, hey, I found this in organically. Do you have a, a, a sales account exec now? If so, are you having conversations with them? Are you sure. helping to influence new features and things? Sure. I think our, uh, I think our admin for Smartsheet at PayPal got tired of uh, me giving them calls. So he said, hey, you do know uh, Taryn Feenstra is your, uh, <laughs> your rep, right? So, so I reached out to Taryn. Um, at this point, we've, you know, we've conversed quite a bit and she's brought a number of other kind of ideas and forward uh, thinking to the tables that we're considering uh, you know, for next steps, what we can do. But you know, the engagement has been great. Um, you know, they've been very responsive, um, helped us out when we kind of hit a hit a you know, rock in the road and we needed some help. So uh, yeah, it's been a great relationship. Any way to quantify the benefits? One of the things I was reading on the Smartsheet website the other day was some pretty big stats on how they're helping companies save time, which in different ways translates to saving dollars. I think I read the average user of Smartsheet will save about 300 hours per year, that's a lot mm. of time. And the average organization will save over 60,000 hours a year. Yep. How, what's <clears throat> the impact been on the weekly roll-ups? Um, that you're able to do. Can, any way to sort of quantify how much that speed has improved? Yeah, I mean, you know, if I go back to kind of the original business case, hey, we're spending, uh, you know, probably half the time of two very high-priced consultants doing this. Um, you know, I'd say it's, it's, you know, it's way up there, um, and we were able to save, I'm sure, a couple hundred thousand dollars at least at a minimum. So, you know, that in itself was a big win. But if we look today, kind of where we are and the time that we're able to save using the tool. Um, you know, given the fact that there is that, that middle layer is just really not there, we don't spend a lot of time on producing content at all. Um, instead, we can take that time and we can focus it on, okay, where are our troubled areas? Of, you know, where do we need to double down? Where do we need to help? And making sure that we're actually getting material work done in the areas that we should be, rather than just, you know, administrative content. Big Pass. productivity gains. Well Jeff, thank yep. you so much for joining Jeff Frick and I on theCUBE and sharing what you guys are doing with Smartsheet in the office of the CIO at PayPal. Glad we to appreciate be here. it. Thank you so much. All right, Thanks. we want to thank you for watching theCUBE. For Jeff and Jeff, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE live from Smartsheet Engage 2018. Stick around, this Jeff and I will be right back with our next guest.